we get three. Hey, is there anything else that we can divide? We've got two ones, we've got a 19, we've got a three. Anything else have common factors there? That's what we're looking for, common factors. So we multiply what's left over. Can you tell me what's going to be on the numerator? One. How do you get one? One times one. Okay. And on the denominator, we'll multiply 19 times 3. That is how much? Good. Can you simplify 1 over 57? No. no. In fact, if you do this properly, you'll never have to simplify that fraction. It should all be taken care of right here. Now, a lot of people on their, their simplification got to the very end. This is the last couple problems of your test. And only did one step of simplification. If you can still simplify, you should do it, okay? Make sure you, you go completely down to the very end where you don't simplify anymore. How many feel okay with this multiplication? Good, all right. Now, we're ready to talk about division. We've already talked about exponents. Let's move on to division. Before we talk about division, I've got to give you a new word. The new word I'm going to give you is called a reciprocal. Can you guys say reciprocal with me? Good, reciprocal, that's right. That problem is not division? This is not division. This is multiplication. <coughs> reciprocal. Okay, what in the world is a reciprocal? Here's what a, a reciprocal is. A reciprocal in, in terms of math, in terms of math, deals with these fractions. So we're dealing with fractions, okay. Well, a reciprocal takes a fraction, and it simply, if you've ever heard of reciprocal, you know what this means. It takes a fraction and it flips it upside down. That's called reciprocating or finding the reciprocal of a fraction. So if I asked you to find the reciprocal or to reciprocate a fraction, what you'd do is you would take your fraction and write it upside down. Does that make sense to you? So instead of 1 over 57, we would have 57 over 1. That's all a reciprocal is. That's this new word for us. So a reciprocal... To find the reciprocal of a fraction, I'm going to say this way, it's not very mathematical. But I'm, I don't want to say you write the numerator in the denominator's place and the denominator in the numerator's place. I'm just going to say you can flip it over. You flip that fraction over. So to find the reciprocal of a fraction, you're going to flip the fraction. So the numerator becomes the denominator. The denominator becomes the numerator. Okay, let's try several examples here. First off, uh, let's do the fraction is 2 fifths, and we're going to be looking for the reciprocal. The reciprocal just says you're taking that fraction, I want you to flip it over. So the numerator now becomes the denominator, and the denominator becomes the numerator. Can you tell me instead of 2 over 5, what am I going to have as the reciprocal? Perfect. How about, um, let's see, how about one, one fifth? Can you tell me what's the reciprocal of one fifth, ladies and gentlemen? Five over one. Okay. Hey, when you do this and you get five over one, how much is five over one? Five. So if you take the reciprocal of one fifth, you could actually get a whole number out of that. Well, what that suggests is that if I have a whole number, can I find the reciprocal? For instance, if I have seven, can I find the reciprocal of seven? Yeah, one over seven. Well, this is already, this is like 7 over 1, right? Good. So the reciprocal of 7 is 1 7. You can say that you've written this as 7 over 1, change it into a fraction, then you reciprocate that fraction, you get 7 over 1. Raise your hand if you're with this so far. Okay, one more I did want to show you. Let's say that we had negative, negative 3 fourths. What's the reciprocal of negative? Three fourths. What was that? Negative four. So do I change the sign of my fraction when I flip it over? If I'm just reciprocating? 
No. So if I have a negative 3 fourths, the reciprocal is a negative still. It's negative 4 thirds. I just wanted you to see that that negative doesn't change at all. We're simply flipping that fraction over. Now, why in the world are we doing all this stuff? Why are we dealing with this reciprocal idea? Well, here, here's the deal. I'm going to lead you to what division of fractions really is. I want you to consider these two problems. Six divided by two. And six times one half. I want you to look at those two problems. They're very basic problems. We can do these things in our head probably. <laughs> Can you tell me what is 6 divided by 2? Okay. Now, also, what's 6 times 1 half? I'll do this below there. 6 times 1 half, 6 as a fraction is how much? 6 over 1. So this is the same thing as 6 over 1 times 1 over 2, right? Yes, no? And to multiply fractions, I know I would write that as 1 fraction first, put my dot, dot, and then I would simplify. What goes into those numbers? Six, two. Two. two goes, okay. This would be one. This would be three. What's my answer going to be? Three. 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 Okay, three. Yeah, I, I would say definitely get three over one, or in other words, just three. Okay, now that we're stop here, do you guys agree that 6 divided by 2 is 3, and also 6 times 1 half is also 3? Raise your yeah. hand if you're all right with this so far. Here's the board. What we know is that if we have 6, the same number here, and we do an operation here, an operation here, and it gives us the same exact number, what this says to us in math is that this operation and this operation must be exactly the same because it gave us the same exact answer. It must be the same thing in this case. And that's true. What I want you to do is consider the relationship between the number two and the number one half. What are those things that we just learned? What, is, what are those? What, how do you get from two to one half or from one half to two? Reciprocal. Say that louder, Jeff. The reciprocal. Do you guys see that they are reciprocals? Mm -hmm. If you reciprocated two, you're going to get one half, right? If you reciprocate one half, flip that over, you're going to get two over one or two. Now, just have you with me, folks. Okay. Here's what this says. It says instead of actually, now this way probably seems harder to us because we're using a fraction. But keep in mind that I'm not always going to have a whole number here. I might have a fraction. It, this, this is what this says. It says instead of dividing by a number, I can actually multiply by the reciprocal of that number, and it will give me the same answer. Instead of dividing by a number, I can multiply by the reciprocal of that number and it will give me the same exact thing. You with me on this? I just showed it. It says it, instead of dividing, we could actually multiply by reciprocal. And that's exactly how we accomplish the division of fractions. Instead of actually going about dividing, we're going to multiply by the reciprocal of whatever fraction we're trying to divide by. And we'll do a whole bunch of examples to show this. But right now, let's write this down. <laughs> Division of fractions is the same thing as a multiplication by the reciprocal of the second fraction. One more thing I need you to notice from this example. Did I do anything to the 6? Did the 6 change at all? No, 6 didn't change. It's just the second number that I'm reciprocating. So division <coughs> is equivalent or is the same is the same as multiplication by the reciprocal of the second fraction. Same as the as multiplication by the reciprocal of the second fraction. In other words, here's what I'm saying. Take a look at the board with me real quick. Let's use some general letters. So if I had some fraction divided by some other fraction, A over B divided by C over D.
listen, we, we really don't have a way to go about and divide fractions easily without, without this. We, we don't have a way. What we're understanding is that division and multiplication by reciprocal are the same thing, and that's what we use for division. We can't just look at two fractions and go, oh, what's this one divided by this one? It doesn't really work, uh, at least not, not easily. We want something that, that works all the time that's not too complicated, right? Right? Yes. Now, of course. So what, the, what we do is, instead of going straight for the division, we kind of flank the problem. We go, okay, we're going to go around the division. We're going to take the division out of my expression. And by how we do that is we say, I know for a fact that division is the same thing as multiplication by the reciprocal of the second fraction. So for, first question, am I going to be flipping over my AB? No. Did I flip over the 6? No. I'm going to leave that one alone. Am I still going to have division? Yes. No. Am I still going to have division here? No. No, no what am I going to have instead? Yeah, which is nice because we just learned multiplication, right? That's great. Now, the second fraction, that's the one we need to reciprocate. So instead of C over D, what am I going to write over here? D over D. Ladies and gentlemen, these are equivalent statements. In fact, we just did this up here. Division by a number, the same thing as multiplication by the reciprocal of that number. It will give us the same exact answer out of that. This is the way we get around our division. We change our division to a multiplication by the reciprocal. Everything will work out just fine. So really, all I'm teaching you is today is how to flip a fraction. That, that's really it. Because as soon as we do this, do you guys see we have multiplication back again, right? We just did multiplication. So we're going to have the same set of rules, the same ideas, only we're flipping the second fraction. Raise your hand if you're all right with this so far. Okay, good. Let's go ahead and try some examples, flesh this idea out a little bit, and then we'll continue. Would it still be, it would be solved if it was an division or no? I don't know. Say what now? Like, I know it's easier to flip that way, but can you still do it in division? Or I didn't hear if you said anything about that. No, I, I, geez, I don't know a good way. No. Okay, that's all. I was just wondering if it's still possible to do it that way. Probably by manipulating the fractions a little bit more, yeah. Uh, but it's not going to be easy, no. Yeah, so. Okay, let's start off nice and basic, basic, just deal with some, some nice, simple fractions here to get the hang of this thing. So we clearly have a division problem. Now, we can't go ahead and conquer division directly. We go around the problem and we change it into something that we can accomplish. How we change division is we change it into multiplication. But the only way we can do that is by reciprocating, which one, the first, the second, or both fractions? Second. Second. Just the second one. So when we're doing this problem, we go, all right, we got 3 fourths divided by 1 eighth. Instead of 3 fourths divided by 1 eighth, we're going to write that as 3 fourths stays the same. The division, though, we're going to change it to multiplication. And the way we change the multiplication is we reciprocate the second fraction. What's my second fraction have to be? Hey, we've seen stuff like that before, right? That's multiplication. How do we do multiplication? Straight lines, uh, straight across, draw the line, put the dot, dot, or re rewrite this as one fraction, which is what I'll do. Nice, and then we just simplify. So really, it's just one extra step. It's this step right here. It's doing the reciprocal, and then you're dealt with a multiplication problem.